Good evening, everybody. 84 participants. Just remind you, please remove, re, uh, mute yourselves if you don't know how. Heather can help you when we hear you. David, do you want me to mute everybody and then you'll unmute yeah, yeah, yourself? Sure. Can right. we start so with that? We'll be, we'll be, yeah, Rabbi, you'll have to unmute yourself and uh, Heather. And, uh, and so I have to unmute myself. Well, second. hang on. I'm going to do it now. Make it louder. So wasn't that a really smooth transition? Thank you. <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our uh, town hall this evening. Uh, my name is David Levine, and my pronouns are he and him, and I'm the current president. Rabbi Baisley and I tonight will be talking to you about what's going on at the temple. Uh, I'm sure Heather will chime in and a few others as we go along. If you have any questions, we will be taking questions. Please either raise your hand or I'll ask, or you can type it in the chat, or at some point we'll be opening up for questions. As we look back at the past uh, pandemic year, we remember those friends and family that we've lost over this past year. But today there seems to be something different. The weather's changing, it's a little bit sunnier out. We're hearing some good news about vaccinations and the COVID statistics and the directions that they're moving. And I know that things are starting to look up, but we must not lose our commitment to health and safety. And it's now time to make sure that we continue these practices so that we can, as a community, will be able to be back together at some point in the near future. We're gonna be talking about topics like that tonight, about how we're gonna be getting back together. I wanted to take a little few uh, uh, minutes to talk about where we are. One of the things that we've done is try to be as transparent as we can with things like our finances. Um, uh, between Heather and the executive staff and Rabbi and Uma, who is our, our, uh, our, our bookkeeper, we were able to apply for the second PPP loan. We did get that loan. Um, again, that loan becomes hopefully a non-loan and becomes a grant. The first one, by the way, did become a grant where it was forgiven. And this one uh, was about $200,000. And this is going to a long way to help us with our payroll, to keep our, our uh, payroll expenses in check, and to allow us to be able to continue to have a balanced budget, uh, and hopefully at the end of this year, and move strongly into the next fis fiscal year. Um, so tonight's town hall, we're going to break up. That's kind of where we're at that uh, with uh, budget-wise. And the um, BNF committee is working diligently for the next fiscal year, which will start in July 1st. I hope I did that right. Um, and so the following year, they're working on the projections for that now. And of course, we always try to look for a balanced budget. Um, so I want to thank them for their continued work. Uh, it's a lot. They put a lot of hours in uh, to take care of that. Uh, this week, uh, for the last couple of weeks, uh, the uh, uh, student rabbi search committee has been meeting, led by Rabbi Baisley. And this Friday, um, that committee will be uh, interviewing 12 candidates for two positions moving forward to the next year. Uh, this is probably the most candidates that we've ever had for student rabbis. Uh, and there's uh, some amazing resumes in there, and I can't wait to meet. And, and speak to some of these students. So I think that's gonna be a really important part of us moving forward to next year. So tonight's town hall, uh, we're gonna break this up. Rabbi thinks there's only two uh, sections. I broke it into three, but it's kind of the same thing. Um, we're gonna talk about our online virtual presence and how that's moving forward. The things like the, um, the Friday night Shabbat services, our keepers programs and how and what we need to do to maintain that, move that forward, and give you some idea of how effective that's been. We're gonna talk about our COVID response, where we were and where we're going and how we're gonna deal with the future. Uh, finally, uh, we're going to do some breakout rooms, which will break out into smaller groups. And I'm kind of giving you this layout because I don't, you know, sometimes as we get through things, a lot of people jump off, but you might want to be here for one of those uh, points. And so at the end, we're going to do some breakout groups, which will give you a more intimate time to talk to one of the uh, board members or the officers um, uh, about topics that may be on your mind. We had put out questions for you to, uh, to ask before the meeting and the overwhelming majority of the questions are 
what is the future going to bring for our services? How are we going to move forward for our programming? If we're going to be in person, not in person, can we do a hybrid? So that's going to be a huge part of our conversation tonight. So with that, I'm going to ask if you have any questions, throw them in the chat or quickly raise your hand. And while that's being done, Rabbi Baisley, would you join us and, and talk to us about um, the online present and, and where we've been? Um, so uh, I, I, all the questions that we got beforehand, I think I've incorporated into what I'm about to say. Um, if I miss anything, again, please write it into the chat um, or um, uh, do one of the raised hand emoji thingies. I'm going to ask Heather to monitor the chat or, or all of that so I can not look at four screens at the same time. I want to start with where we've been in terms of engagement, um, because that's going to lead to what we're doing going forward. Um, so right now there are, in terms of um, technology, uh, four main ways that we connect with all of you. Uh, the first is through Zoom. We have our Zoom tour study, our Zoom map, our Zoom Tanakh, our, our uh, you Zooms, our Zoom gatherings. This is something we're doing over Zoom. That's one way to get us all into a room in, have a town hall or classroom-like setting. Uh, then we have a couple of streaming methods. We have the Temple website, we have YouTube, and we have Facebook. When we are streaming a Friday night service or uh, the perm spiel or um, the cabaret night, it originates with the Temple website and then gets syndicated into a couple of different places being YouTube or Facebook. So you can look at it in one of three different places. I'm going to, in a moment, talk about our average number of participants. I don't want to say view because that makes it feel passive and feels like a performance. And it isn't because what I'm hearing from all of you is that services feel very engaging as if the next best thing to being present. So I'm not going to call them views but there are moments of engagement and participation. Uh, in terms of our Friday night services, so this is where Facebook gets a little tricky. It will say 250 to 350 views, but we know that there are about 25 people who watch it live off of Facebook. While I say people are 25 live views, it doesn't mean um, 25 people because I'm picking on Malcolm and Barbara in front of me because there are two people sitting next to each other right next to me on the screen. Um, they're counting right now as one view, even though there are two of them watching. So on Facebook, there are 25 live views. On YouTube, there are approximately 100 live views. And on the Temple website, there are approximately 75 views, um, which would give us an, on average, on any given Friday night, about 25 computers, I'm sorry, about 200 computers that are engaged with services, knowing that sometimes those uh, computers have one, two, three, or four people on it at a time. Even on our best of Shabbat services, I don't think we ever hit somewhere around 300 or 400 people. Um, and that's what our um, footprint is leading to right now. And if you go to, you can only do this off of the Temple website, um, the, the, the StreamSpot server. If you go onto the StreamSpot server and you look at where people are viewing from, while the majority are from New Jersey, you have a bunch down in Florida, a bunch in um, uh, New York City, a bunch in upper uh, New Jersey, a couple in Connecticut, a couple in Delaware. Thank you, Cantor Stanton, for your fan club. Um, and also a couple in the Midwest and also the East of uh, the West Coast. Um, and I know that there's some Californian families that watch not live, but when it's Shabbat time. In fact, one of those families will be logging on this Friday as we do a double baby naming for uh, uh, Kim and Kurt's grandchildren Friday uh, during services. And they're going to be joining us from California to be part of services. Um, so we get, a, on average, 200 screens for a Friday night service. For our perm spiel, on Facebook, there have been about 2,000 watches of the perm spiel. 
There were 33 people live on the YouTube channel. There were 192 people watching it. And on the Temple website, 53, which gives us about 280 people who were watching the perm spiel live or right about that time, including all the after watches, not including the after watches on Facebook. That is an enormous amount of people. I don't even think we can fit 278 bodies into the amphitheater. And remember, those aren't the individuals. Those are the screens with multiple people watching at one time. The Cabaret Night on Facebook had 800 views, but 28 live. YouTube had 308. Temple website was at 113, which gives us about 449 unique computers that watched Cabaret Night. Um, we now have enough subscribers to our YouTube channel that our YouTube uh, name is actually, we have a YouTube channel dedicated to ourselves and it's been named, uh, it's youtube.com slash C slash Anche Emeth Memorial Temple. So if you just type in YouTube Anche Emeth Memorial Temple, you will get to us. Um, so our footprint has, online footprint has massively expanded and so has our membership outside of Middlesex County. Now, I bring this up to talk about how we are going forward in a hybrid world, because the truth is, is there may be a long time before everybody in our congregation feels safe coming back. And also, we need to realize that there are limitations that a lot of people have with being able to physically enter our building at any point in time. I also want to bring up a really nice thing that has happened in the last couple of months which is since March when we started going full steam on, on Zoom and, and streaming and whatnot, and the high holidays in particular, which brought in, it blew all the numbers that I just mentioned out of the water. Um, I've gotten letters from some of our congregants who have permanently moved out of state, but have remained congregants, or we came associate congregants, or left the congregation, now coming back to the congregation, and saying how they feel like this place has become their home again, even though they haven't been here in 10, 15, or 20 years in one case. Um, I love the fact that this place can be somebody's home, even though they aren't in the state anymore. And they grew up here, they were part of here, they, they are on Shama through and through, just don't live in New Jersey anymore, but are now reconnecting to the temple. And that is beautiful. And when we start going back to in person, I don't want them to lose their home, as I'm sure you will agree with me. Or you might be really excited about this as you are planning to move out of state to go to warmer weather yourself. Um, before I talk about the exact technologies that we're investing in, I want to talk a little bit about COVID restrictions, what restrictions have been left, uh, lifted, and what this means for the temple. Uh, we scheduled a, uh, another meeting of our COVID task force uh, which is comprised of board members, officers, and uh, doctors um, to go over what the CDC is recommending, what science and medicine is prescribing to us. Uh, we've scheduled the next one for uh, March 24th in light of um, all of the changes that are happening to this, uh, with the CDC and with what Dr. Fauci is saying. Um, on NPR, I, I know I'm driving some people crazy with this, on NPR the other day, I heard somebody refer to the vaccine as the Fauci ouchie. Um, that, that's just become an earworm for, you, for me. So I, I hope you're all planning to get your Fauci ouchie if you haven't already. Um, but uh, one of the things, because I know one of the questions was uh, the state of New Jersey lifted or increased the capacity that churches and synagogues can have. Can't we get back in and sing? Um, or I noticed at the bat mitzvah last week that was lovely that there were people in the sanctuary for the bat mitzvah. Have things changed? Um, due to the, the last, um, back in, in the fall, around September, with the change, um, our COVID team uh, said that they felt comfortable with us having 25 people in the sanctuary for a life cycle event, a bar, bat mitzvah, that sort of thing, perhaps even a wedding. And that was the number that they felt um, comfortable with maximum capacity. We decided not to include Friday night services in that 25 person allowance. 
because at what point do you cut that off? At what point do you say, I'm sorry, we're full? And also, um, one of the guidance that they said is everybody has to wear a mask and, and we really are, are hesitant about singing. If the cantor can't wear a mask and sing, nobody can sit on that side of the, the sanctuary. So it really limits the space for us to be six feet apart from one another as well in a safe way. And if you're singing, the distance needs to be even further. So in a congregation our size, based upon all of those constrictions, 25 is really the maximum number we can fit in, even though that number is being lifted. And when we meet with the COVID team on the 24th, we're going to readdress that. One of the values that our synagogue has really held on to is the Jewish value of pukuach nefesh, the preservation of life, and that there is nothing more important in this world than preserving life and health and well-being. Um, I have buried too many people this last year because of COVID. You all have know somebody who has been affected in a horrible way. God willing, they survived, but perhaps they didn't. Um, we don't want to move fast on lifting our restrictions and then pay the ultimate price for that, especially when our engagement has been so high. And if you were to come to the synagogue on a Friday night to, to see our setup with our um, webcams, if you're sitting anywhere in the synagogue, you will not see any of the clergy because of all of the equipment set up. And we want to make sure that everybody, whether in person or at home, has an equitable experience and a prayerful experience during services and what we're doing. That's why we're investing in some of the technology that I'm about to talk about. Um, we are noticing, as the CDC or as Dr. Fauci said, he said you can see the light of the end of, at the end of the tunnel coming upon us, and it looks like the light might be closer than we thought it might be, but that's only if we do the right things and don't immediately go back to normal. We've, we've got to still take precautions in the right way and take it seriously. We are, you know, earlier in the month, we were thinking that the first time we might be all able to gather in the sanctuary for our service might be Hanukkah. And I thought how lovely that would be, the dedication of life. Hanukkah means dedication and they rededicated the temple. And after a year and a half, we can rededicate our sanctuary together. But it looks like we might be able to gather sooner than that. Um, if everything's going as they are describing, and if herd immunity comes in August, we might actually be able to do some sort of high holiday experience in the sanctuary with one another um, and not do it recorded or semi-recorded or live recorded with nobody there. So we, we have that on the horizon. Um, we also are thinking that um, over the summer we might be able to do barbecues again. It might not be Friday night Shabbat barbecues but they might be Havdalah barbecues in Johnson Park or Donaldson Park and, and have a nice, large outdoor space. Um, we're thinking that we might be able to start opening up our synagogue to Torah study, to math, to Tanakh, um, uh, with the caveat of it being hybrid, and I'll explain what that is shortly. Um, maybe be able to bring people in who are vaccinated. And, and we are, let me reassure everybody, we are taking all of this very seriously. We want to keep everybody safe. We're thinking about Pukuach Nefesh, but we also want to make sure that we can return to the synagogue as soon as we can while also doing it safely as being the key. Let's talk about hybrid. My hope is, and we're looking at a lot of really good technology for this, but my hope is, is that if you've been a member of Tanakh or Torah study or MAP, and you've been doing it from out of state, that we will be able to create an in-person, but also virtual component where you will feel just as connected as you currently do. Um, we are looking at putting in all of our study sessions and all of our study spaces, a 55 or 65 inch uh, interactive smart boards that attached to a very particular type of camera called a web owl. Um, the best way of describing a web owl might be a very sophisticated looking nanny cam, um, but essentially it's this owl with two little eyes and there's a camera on top and it can follow and track the voices of those who are speaking. 
So if you imagine being in tour study with a big U set up and we have the camera in the middle, as participants in the class are talking, the camera will pan to highlight them so that if you're at home and we'll put a smart board at one corner of the U or at one side of the U, that everybody is in the circle together. Everybody is in the square together and is able to participate equally and see what's happening equally. This is not going to be one of those experiences where you are watching a room learn from 20 feet away, but you will be immersed in it with everybody else. That brings me to our live control. Um, right now we use a service to stream our services when we're not using Zoom. So if you go to the bat mitzvah from last Friday, um, it's a one single cam, which is not a high definition camera, it's a, st a standard definition camera. It's in the back of the sanctuary, and you've got one shot the entire service. Um, as one congregant put me, it's like watching C-SPAN. That's why they um, like how we're doing Friday night services where we're going back and forth from one camera to the next or a group shot. Um, there's a service we want to invest in called Live Control. Um, it is the only service that we know of that we've found that does this, but um, they have a, a great deal right now. They're going to give us two high definition 4K cameras that are going to go in. Sorry, everybody. I just got a phone call, so it booted me off Zoom. Um, uh, that's going to go in the sanctuary that's going to be controlled by a technician virtually. And they're going to know our service. We're going to go through the different cues, what's going on. And they can zoom in to do a shot just like this or zoom out or go between multiple people. When the choir sings, the camera will turn to the, cam uh, to the choir so you can actually see the choir sing. I can't tell you how many times when the choir was doing services in the old days of the corner live stream where they also weren't mic'd properly, where people would say, why do you and the cantor stop singing halfway during the service and stare at the corner for like two minutes? because the choir singing and nobody at home can hear them or see them. So we're also spoke to our sound uh, technicians. We're going to get a couple of competing bids, but we're going to do redo the sound system in the sanctuary so that the choir can be heard, so that you can all hear everything that's being heard. We're going to replace the speakers, which are not the right type of speakers for our prayer space. And you guys are going to be able to be fully immersed in the service, whether you are at home or whether you're in the congregation, but you'll all have a really good view and feel part of the service just as you do now. Um, we also, I will be frank with you all, uh, we are finding the money for this. We are not going to do a campaign for this. We debated it, but we didn't want to do a campaign and put stress or tax are on any of you in this uncertain time with thanks to the, the PPP loan and a couple of other sources and angel here or there, we, we believe that we are going to be able to cover this without an undue expense to the temple and, um, and an undue expense to you all. That was very important for us that you wouldn't have to bear a burden of being able to get access to your home, but be able to just have access to the home by being in you know, virtue of being a congregant. If any of you would like to help out and be an angel, please let me know. I, I'd love your assistance, but we're, we're going to do this without doing a campaign. You guys have had enough campaigns for the last five years to last you a little while longer. So we're not going to do that. We're committed to finding the money for this without doing it. This is important and I think pivotal to the future of our congregation that we can go hybrid, we're seeing it in the numbers, but we're also seeing it in how people are saying they're engaged. Yes, it does not replace being in person. And I know you all want to be in person as soon as humanly possible. And I promise we will do that as soon as it's safely possible to do it. But we want to make sure that, that we are primed for the future and account for a changing and unpredictable world. I believe I have mentioned everything that was on my list. I think I covered the questions that came in. If there's anything that needs clarification, or if you have any questions, by all means, please go ahead and ask. 
So you'll either have to unmute yourself, raise your hand, and or type it in the chat. Yeah, yeah. yeah David. Uh, Neil, Neil uh, and Maxine. Yeah, hi. Yeah. I, I got a question. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Um, you know, it's pretty exciting to hear about the level of engagement that we've got at our online events. Uh, I was just curious to get a little bit more information about that. But maybe Rabbi Baisley knows, um, on, on average, on a Friday night, uh, how many of our participants um, are, are, are simply not members of the synagogue at all? I cannot tell you 100% because um, our live, our, our StreamSpot server only tells us the IP addresses, if it even tells us that. It can tell us general locations, but we don't get identities. Facebook tells you the number of views, but not necessarily who's viewing it if you're not viewing it live. Um, if somebody clicks like and I don't know who they are, that, that tells me. Um, I do know there are non-congregants who are watching because every now and then we get a check from somebody we've never met in Connecticut or Florida or Texas saying, I really appreciate your services. Here's $100 to help you with the service, you know, streaming in the technology. So we've had a couple of those come in over the last year, um, but I can't tell you exactly how many. It's an interesting um, question because um, regardless if they're non-congruence or congruence, if they're non-congruence, they the bulk of the number, how really exciting that people who are unaffiliated are connecting with us. And now it's a question of how do we draw them in even more? And if it's all congregants that are connecting with us on this service, then we have congregants who are now more engaged in Friday night services than they ever were before. So either way, it's a really good conundrum. Uh, it's it's a, a, a good problem to deal with. And I think actually going forward in this hybrid world, um, we should um, treat it as if both of those possibilities are equally true because we're reaching that many people regardless. So I have, this is a sort of second part to my question. Um, what is the experience in, in regards to increased engagement like this with other similar congregations around the country? I mean, you, have, you must have heard from some of your colleagues. about it. Um, I, I have heard from some. Um, I would say anecdotally, we're doing really well. Um, and um, there's been a lot of drop off in some of my friends' synagogues, um, some more major than others. Uh, our membership number has been pretty much steady and stable through this time. Um, but our viewership and our engagement has been really high. Um, in terms of, you know, Friday night services, I, I Again, for those of you who know me, I, I don't like boasting or, or, or whatnot, but there are very few synagogues that I'm aware of that do services like we do with four cameras going back and forth um, that I'm controlling during the service. Um, and I know there are some congregations that are still doing Zoom services from home um, rather than figuring out how to bring people into a prayer space virtually. Um, so um, I... I think we're doing well with that. Thank you. Heather, I, I know you're not in your head. I don't know if you have... Yeah, um, I've heard from other executive directors. Um, some, someone I was on a call with last week was talking about how most of their congregation tunes into Central Synagogue on Friday nights. And I thought to myself, not in where I am. People may go watch Central Synagogue at some point, but I, I hear from a lot of you that you're enjoying being with us on Friday nights. And... Um, yes, yeah, some congregations are also similar to, to what we're doing. They feel very connected with their congregations. It really just depends on whether the synagogue was able to pull together a really interesting service. And the way Rabbi Baisley is doing it, that's all him. I don't know if everybody here knows that. We initially had one camera and that wasn't good enough for him. He felt like it wasn't interesting enough for all, everybody who's watching from home. And he figured out a way to get three different cameras set up in the sanctuary and for him to be able to control it and switch the view from the cantor to himself to Piano Dave so that it would be a little bit more interesting for everybody who's watching to give you more of a sense of how it would be if you were there when you're looking at him at one point and you're looking at, 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 at the cantor at the keyboard at another. 
that's all because your rabbi figured out how to do that and is able to do it seamlessly during the service and taught the other clergy how to do it. So when he's not there, Rabbi Glasser is able to do it as well. So, um, so thank you to Rabbi Glasser for the times when you're controlling the service, when she's there. But that is highly unusual. Most synagogues where you see them bouncing around, it's because they have the service called live control that he was talking about before, where there are paid remote operators doing that, which we will have to go to when we bring people back into the synagogue. Otherwise, we won't know how to, um, how, how to, you know, there's no way to, for us to do it in the, in the sanctuary while we also have people there. Um, but other synagogues either, like you said, are doing Zoom um, because that's, you know, the, the, that's the way that they figured it out. But um, yeah. Great. Um, and I will add, yes, Rabbi Glasser does the, the controlling as well when I'm not there. And if you've ever noticed us go solely on the canter during the Zmi Road at the beginning of the service, that's because we've gotten a message that the sound is off and we need to adjust. So usually during that period, I'm, I'm running to the sound mixer and, and playing with it and whatnot. Um, I've gotten a couple private questions. Uh, is there any possibility of doing a drive-in service as in going to the drive-in movies now that the weather is better? Uh, I know uh, Matt looked at that as one possibility for the high holidays. Um, uh, we're trying to figure that out. Uh, you know, if the question was, if we couldn't all be in the building for the high holidays, could the Cantor and I be there live streaming it and you all be in, for example, the drive-in movies, which I thought was kind of a neat idea. Um, we're working on trying to figure out how that might work. One of the limitations is the light outside because now as the weather is getting better, it's getting darker later, um, which means that we'd have to wait a certain time to see the movies. So we're, we're looking into it, but um, that hasn't been a top priority just yet. Uh, another question is why don't we have tour service on Friday nights? Um, that has a little bit more to do with, um, um, uh, with the length and duration of an online service and what we thought people's capacities might be after an entirety of Zooming work. Although I understand people can turn off the computer if they don't want to. Um, we kind of wanted to make an experience that would account for Zoom fatigue and also um, that being online watching a service, even though it's still a service, is a lot harder to do for an hour and a half um, than it is for a service that's a little bit more faster space. Um, we have done a tour service uh, before on a Friday night. We are going to do some more in the future. Um, and when we go back to being hybrid uh, or having people in person, we'll do it a lot more frequently. Um, yes, Heather. I have one comment that I want to share from somebody anonymously who messaged me. Uh, this person is new to the temple and uh, wants everybody to know that they have been on Zoom calls um, meetings, book club, and how grateful they are for all the remote programs that we're doing. So thank you for sharing that with me. Um, and, and in terms of things, I also want, um, the Purim Friday night service that Cantor Stan and I did was, was a lot of fun to do, but very weird um, because it's hard telling jokes and doing shtick like that to no one in front of you. At one point I used, I hope somebody's laughing, um, and I got a plethora of um, uh, response to saying we're laughing with you and, and I really appreciate that because that was like a really weird and bizarre moment for me so I, I really did appreciate people reaching out saying it was good and we enjoyed it because um, um, it, it, I was really uncertain about that and uh, for those of you who asked it was actually the canter's idea to play the, the trick at the end with the wine in the jug that, that did not I did not prank the canter I had no awareness that that was happening um, Ronnie has a question, but I, you started no, she, typing. She responded, Heather. So Torah readers on the horizon. Uh, will there be adult to Torah readers on the horizon? Ah, I really yes. miss that. I hope to have another opportunity. Yes. Especially during uh, the summer services where we're going to ask people to chant Torah and give a Devar. I, I definitely want to do that again, um, uh, even if you're doing it from home and not, not from the temple, temple itself. How about Russ? Uh, Russ. Hi. 
Uh, thank you. I'm listening to what you're saying about the future, especially, you know, with the hybrid of it. And obviously, I'm going to what we've been doing. And I, I can tell you two things. First of all, as a comment, number one, being a TV manager here in Milltown and work, I'm in a lot of audio video groups online and different in Reddit and Facebook, other places. I encourage them to look at our high holiday service that Noah and his team did. That was wonderful. And you have no idea. I must have had dozens of professionals in the field telling me, it was amazing. The overlays, the, the, the quick mixing that, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, there, you know, there are high end things, you know, that some of these guys work on Hollywood productions, but they love that a single temple and, you know, mid-sized city was able to do this and make it so meaningful for maybe, you know, maybe a thousand people possibly. I don't know how many people actually saw it, but a lot. So that's number one. So I want to make sure everybody here is aware that we are, we are admired by people that really understand this very well. Number two is going forward the hybrid techniques you're talking about, like for instance, in the future, we have, you know, after hopefully COVID's a different distant memory, we're sitting there in the sanctuary and somebody's Aunt Sophie can't make it. So are we gonna be able to use Zoom and stuff like that to have them do the Aaliyah and things like that in current, while we're having a live service? We that's, do that? that's a little bit trickier. I know. Because, um, you don't want to have we are only able to pull off Zoom services right now because I've got a giant smart board in front of me. Right. Um, it's hard to pull off a Zoom service like that. Um, however, Live Control has the capacity to take the feed that they're going in and out on and push it to Zoom with other people on the Zoom call. So theoretically, if, and, and now I'm, I'm really just spitballing right here. Um, but if somebody were, if I were to have a, an iPad in front of me on the Bema, I know, Shonda, um, but if I were to have an iPad in front of me on the, the Bema, where I could see what's happening online, there might be a way where we're able to interact with whoever's the fourth aliyah at the bat mitzvah, so they can be a part of the experience. The question is, how do we get it to the rest of the congregation to engage too? That takes a little bit more work around. I'm sure that there is a fix to that. I just have only spent a minute and a half thinking about it. So, well, uh, we're always here to help. Thank you. Uh, and, and the truth is that the technology is changing weekly, daily, monthly. And we're going to be doing one thing. And then a couple of months later, you might see a, a change to it. So it's an exciting time to, to ramp up this engagement. Any more questions? Iris, uh, Iris. Yeah. I wanted to say, as one of the older members of the of the temple, how appreciate how much I appreciate having services on Friday night and and having the Onik Shabbat. Um, I don't drive at night anymore, so going to temple is you know, it gets to be a little when you know even before this was a problem. So now. My Friday nights are absolutely blocked out for Friday night. That's what I do. And um, I light the candles now every Friday night, which sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. And I, I just appreciate having people to talk to and, and, um, and my connection with my roots and how it was when I grew up, my house, you know, the home that I came from when I was a little girl. So I appreciate all of you of what you do. So thank you. Thank you. Any more questions before we move on to push rabbi to the next topic? We definitely want to hear from you. So really, if you have any questions, let us know. Great. Okay, we can always come back and you can ask him again in the breakout group. Rabbi, why don't you tell us a little bit about COVID response? I think I did. Oh, what are we up to then? I, I think we're up to breakout groups. Oh, look at so that. What I'm going to say is please stick around for the breakout groups. You'll be meeting in small groups with staff members and with officers and with board members. If you have any follow-up questions, my son is trying to break into my office right now. Last night he wasn't clothed. Hopefully he's clothed right now. I'm really not joking, unfortunately. Um, uh, um, please stay in those groups. It, those who stayed on last time for the town hall and, and did the breakout groups, 
remarked on how wonderful it was to get to know other congregants that they might not have known beforehand. Um, this is an important part of being in the community is to getting to know one another. Um, so please stick around, introduce yourselves to one another, talk about how you're doing, talk about what you're hoping for next, um, or, or what, what the future may bring for you. Um, and uh, I, again, I, I want to encourage everybody to get their Fauci ouchie, and I can't wait to see you all in person. So, so before you, no, Heather, before you jump I, up, I'm not, yeah. Back? No, we don't okay, need to come so back. A couple but quick things before we leave to go to breakout groups. Uh, I wanted just some odds and ends. Uh, in the mail, you should have received your 50 50 raffle. Um, please, please uh, take, buy a raffle, send your check in to uh, Heather at the office. Uh, the tasting series, if you're on the beer series, it was amazing. Chocolate series is sold out. There'll be a, uh, some more series more. coming up. There's a cheese tasting and a wine tasting coming up in April and May. Uh, the committee uh, led by Allison and Laura have been doing an amazing, amazing job. There'll be an online auction coming up soon. Uh, congregational meeting will be May 4th, and that's when we're going to be doing the 50-50 uh, raffle. Please make sure that you join us on that. And with all that, I wish you a very happy Pesach. Oh, one other thing, Bob Peabody, I believe this weekend is a um, Pesach for the WSG program. Women's Spirituality Group, yes. Yes. So Women's Spirituality, Women's Spirituality is having a Pesach program this weekend. Uh, please join them. It should be very exciting. They always have a wonderful program. I wish you all a wonderful Pesach. We'll see you in the breakout room. So I'm going to stop the recording.